Things from Red Eye Games, and we're here with Jesse Watts, who got second with his wizard deck at the Dice Jar Games event. Uh, and uh, he's one of the better uh, wizard players, I dare say the best wizard player right now in Constructed. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. And he's going to be doing his uh, wizard deck profile. So um, how are you doing today, Jesse? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, so your wizard deck is all the rage. I know I net decked it and tried in vain to play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a deck that's uh, it's a class that just takes a lot of skill and and practice. I think um, probably one of the harder ones to play uh, classic constructed in. But of course, everyone's uh, played them in blitz, mm -hmm. killed people in two turns, and figured they'd try to do that in in classic constructed. I always feel like the wizard is the uh, okay boomer of the set. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, is this not your turn? It's our turn. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, I've definitely heard that one a lot. <laughs> so uh, walk me through the deck. So what are we starting with here? All right. So of course uh, we've got uh, Kano is obviously our hero. Um, for the equipment, we'll just go through this uh, nice and quick because I. Basically, have one set. We've got the the Crucible of Aether Weave. Um, Aether Spindle is just kind of awkward or bad. Uh, Arcanite Skull Cap. Um, I've seen a lot of argument for Talismatic Lens, and um, yeah, it's probably pretty good. But I decided to run the Skull Cap. Um, it just provides a little more defensive options, and trying to cut things for an equipment that I might use is a little bit tough. Hmm. Uh, Fyndel Spring Tunic. Um, it's just the best in slot for Wizard. It gives free energy and doesn't take an action point like Robo Rapture. Um, we've got Storm Striders. This helps you uh, actually finish the game with uh, your life points above zero. Uh, unfortunately, needing two legendaries to really function is a downside of Wizard, but. Uh, he kind of needs all the help he can get. Um, as for the equipment with options, you've got Metacarpus Node. Uh, this helps you just pull out a lot more damage on one or two big turns. Uh, so I'm just going to open the window for my cat, who you may, may be up to here. Um, and then uh, Metacarpus Node is also really important, as of the, all my equipment, it's the only one with Arcane Barrier 1. So. If you happen to come up against Runeblade, you definitely want Metacarpus Node and want to remember not to break it. Uh, and the other option is, of course, Iron Rock Gauntlet. Um, that's helpful for uh, your matchups such as Ninja, uh, Warrior, and Guardian, just to help prevent some of those really scary on-hit effects, uh, including Mask of Momentum and Dawnblade are scary on-hit effects. Um, so that's the equipment and the hero. Uh, so we'll go through the, uh, the blues and the yellows because there's probably not too much to, uh, go there. And then we'll go to the reds where I imagine there'll be some questions because I've got some explaining to do. Um, so for the blues, we've got energy potion. Uh, that thing's great. You can flip it off Kano, put it into play. Uh, otherwise it pitches for three. Unfortunately, it does not block. Uh, got zap uh just blocks for three pitches for three sometimes doesn't does a damage if you're feeling sad same with uh reverberate snapback uh snapback can also activate some effects of wizard cards uh you know even if you're just playing the blue one yeah it's one damage it's uh it's not great but uh things like gaze the ages uh if you've played another wizard non-attack action card from your uh, this turn, put Gaze the Ages into your hand as a result. So what you can do, if you've got Gaze the Ages and a, even just a blue snapback in your hand, is you can play Gaze the Ages, then before it resolves, play snapback. Snapback seen Gaze the Ages be played, so you can play it as if it were an, if it, as if it were an instant. Uh, and then when Gaze the Ages resolves, it's seen that you've played Snapback, so it returns to your hand. Um, so the blue Snapback, you don't really play it that often, but it can be a little bit uh, cheeky just for allowing some of those uh, extra combos. Um, 
We have blue Scalding Rain, blue Aether Flare. Again, these are just, you know, you're a very resource heavy deck. You do need a lot of blues. These ones block for three, sometimes are uh, do damage, and they're most notably are uh, wizard non attack cards. Uh, Foreboding Bolt is in a very similar vein, does a little bit less damage, but it opts one. And then uh, Whisper of the Oracle is just because I needed another blue. It sometimes opts, it blocks for three. Uh, Whisper of the Oracle is possibly one of the worst cards in the deck, but uh, it's still there. Um, so those are all the blues. All of these are, of course, uh, three ofs. Uh, I think you end up with 27 blues uh, in the deck. It's somewhere around those that number. Uh, and when you're sideboarding uh, before the game, you just don't take any blues out, uh, basically ever. Uh, as for yellows, we have uh, Sonic Boom, possibly one of the scariest wizard cards around because uh, you don't know what it's going to do. Uh, for those that don't know, Sonic Boom, it costs two, it deals three arcane damage to the opposing hero, and uh, if Sonic Boom deals damage, look at the top card of your deck. If it's a wizard non-attack action, you can banish it. If you do, you can play it this turn as if for an instant, so it's basically a Kano activation. However, its cost is reduced by uh, however much damage you deal with Sonic Boom. So if you deal even just one damage with Sonic Boom, you can still play your uh, uh, your bigger, scarier cards, like Voltic Bolt off it. You just need to pay one. Uh, we have Lesson in Lava. This uh, just helps you tutor things up. It gives you consistently put things on top of your deck. Uh, Chain Lightning. This is uh, sometimes a very good card and very often a very awkward card that I'd rather just block with. But uh, when it's good, it's really good. It's kind of like Aether Flare in that way. And then for non-wizard uh, yellows, we have uh, Remembrance. So I run two Remembrance in my deck. I tried out three and... Uh, I found that with Sonic Boom and with Kano activations, uh, I was just hitting Remembrance too much, and because it's a instant, uh, you can't play it. You can't even banish it. It just kind of sits there, and you feel bad. Uh, but Remembrance is very useful for, of course, putting things back into your deck. And then I have a single Tome of Fiendal. Um I kind of want to try out two or even three in the deck. I just only own one um which is also uh with the blues why i'm not running uh eye of ophidia just because i don't own it it's an expensive card and uh uh all my value is in my equipment it seems uh so for the reds with the red cards we kind of have uh three classes of cards we have cards that will almost always just stay in your deck. Uh, we have cards for when you're trying to go tall, trying to break through um, three, four arcane barrier. And then we have cards when you just want to race and uh, you're not expecting much arcane barrier, you're just expecting to have to go as fast as possible. Uh, so, and of course, each matchup, the, the cards that stay in do alter slightly but for the cards that are typically just staying in your deck we have uh three tome of aetherwind uh this thing's nuts if you hit it off kano because then you can just uh you pitch three you hit a tome you draw two you're up a card uh sometimes you use its other mode but most of the time you're just drawing two uh scalding rain is good it's uh of the three cards that just kind of do damage, you've got Zap, Scalding Rain, and Voltage Bolt. Uh, Scalding Rain is good because it's just kind of in the middle. It deals four, it costs one. Uh, with Aether Flare, it's uh, kind of like uh, Chain Lightning in that it is just uh, sometimes the best card in your deck, but very often pretty average. Um, 
the nice thing about Aether Flare is people will block it uh, come hell or high water. You know, they'll uh, they'll see Aether Flare, they'll, they'll know that it can occasionally just do huge amounts of damage, so they'll, uh, they'll throw away way more resources than they should when you're just wanting to uh, then arsenal a card and pass. Uh, so that's the nice thing about Aether Flare. Um, so those are the three, uh, and then we've also got uh, Centering Foresight. So Centering Foresight is a card in the community that, uh, when it was first revealed, everyone was like, this seems bad. Then when people were playing it, they, seemed, they said, this is amazing, we want to run nine. Um, I only run the three reds. The main reason is it blocks for two, and if you have it on your turn, it just doesn't do enough. Uh, you know, it takes an action point to opt. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of when I was playing with it when it first came out, it was just a bit too awkward for my uh, taste. Uh, so those are the cards that will often just stay in your deck, regardless of what uh, type of deck you're wanting to play. Uh, oh, and of course, Blazing Aether. I don't know how I had that in the wrong pile. Uh, Blazing Aether is fantastic. It uh, deals X damage, where X is the amount of arcane damage you have dealt to the hero this turn. Uh, it checks what X is when it's resolving. So if you end up playing Blazing Aether and then uh, following up with a snapback, then Blazing Aether will still see that. Uh, it allows you to do all sorts of fun uh, wizard stuff that my community is starting to uh, despise as time goes on. Uh, for uh, cards that when you're wanting to just go break over their arcane barrier, uh, you of course have Stir the Aether Winds. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of Wizards deck run this, obviously, but not many Wizards want to take it out of their deck. You know, it's a very scary card, but at the end of the day, it blocks for two. Uh, it costs two to increase a damage effect by three, so it's actually much less efficient than... Uh, say, zap if you're able to play things as instants, if action points aren't a problem. We, of course, have Vaulted Vault. Um, I'm running this over uh, Aether Spindle. So the main reason is I have Vaulted Vault in the deck for the damage. Aether Spindle uh, costs two, deals one less damage, and has a strong op effect of uh, you opt X, where X is the damage that you deal. Uh, the problem is that if you're opting 5 off Aether Spindle, uh, of course boosted by something like Crucible, you're probably winning that game anyway because your opponent doesn't know how to block wizard stuff. Uh, and the final card that I often side out if I'm not wanting to go tall is Forked Lightning. Uh, of course Stir Forked is probably the most iconic combo in Wizard. Uh, with Stir the Aether Winds and then Fork Lightning, you've got 10 damage uh, on the board for a, for 5 energy. Uh, with Crucible, that goes up to 12. With Metacarpus Nodes, that's up to 14. And that's assuming you've got no, no other effects to buff the damage. Uh, everything that buffs damage for Fork Lightning is just you know, twice as strong. It's a very scary card, but at its base, it is a 3 cost 4 damage. Uh, Vaulted Bolt deals 5 damage for 2. It's just... Uh, it's very bad, unless it's very good. Uh, and then when we're wanting to go wide, uh, which is your matchups like Ninja, um, Warrior, those guys just don't really have a lot of Arcane Barrier. They just want to race. So we accept that offer, and we decide to go as fast as we can. Uh, that's where the likes of Reverberate is very good. It deals 3 Arcane damage. Then it lets you cast something else in your hand. Um, you know, you, if you're not blocking, you end up with 3, 4 cards in your hand. You can't play them all. Reverberate really helps with that. Uh, snapback is kind of like Reverberate in that it's helping you cast multiple things per turn. Uh, if you've played another Wizard non-attack action, you can play Snapback as if we're an instant. Um... Snapback is probably the most important card for getting unfair wizard stuff onto the table. And uh, the final card is Zap. So Zap is 
it's zero mana, uh, sorry, zero energy for three damage. It's it is exactly fine. It's great if you hit it off Kano and you don't have spare resource. I've seen the argument that if you're activating Kano and you don't have resource spare, then you shouldn't activate Kano. But uh, I don't know. I've tested the deck without it. I've tested the deck with it, and I just feel comfortable with my zaps. And then uh, the final card is Fate for Scene. So Fate for Scene is kind of like the um, Iron Rock Gauntlet. You're wanting it to stop uh warrior it's also been helpful in ra uh, against ranger and guardian uh again just to stop some of those scary on hit effects when uh you're kind of expecting uh if you decide to race or if it's going to be a long game you need to stop them from getting out of control um so most of these cards are three ofs uh fork lightning is a two of, and I'm just bringing my list back up to see if I am still only running two. Uh, no, and I, I am running three time of vapor wind. So all of these are three odds except for the fork lightning, which is two. Um, again, fork lightning is just one of those cards that are bad until it wins you the game. Um, so that's the very quick breakdown of the deck uh, and all the cards that I'm running. All right. Well, I do have some questions. Um, mainly, oh, you um, might. I didn't see, um, I mean, you obviously explained why you uh, weren't running Iapophidia. You just don't have it. If you had it, that would, um, that's clearly going to change. Um, but there was a card I, I was just curious about, and that was uh, Aether uh, Spindle. I didn't see that in your reds. Yeah, so um, when I was building the deck, uh, I I don't really like having two cost cards. Uh, you'll notice that the I only have a few of them. Uh, we've got Voltic Bolt, we've got Fork Lightning, uh, we've got Stir of the Aether Winds, and we have uh, Sonic Boom. Um, so when I was uh, building the deck. I, I was kind of having some resource troubles when I was playing with Aether Spindle and Vault of Bolt. Um, I would find that I'd have just enough hands that were light on resource or that I wanted to do more things with my resource than just play one card. Um, so I decided to really look at why I was playing Vault of Bolt. And that was because of the those really high Arcane Barrier matchups. Guardian, they can afford to run four Arcane Barrier and still swing a hammer every turn. Um, Control Dash can run uh, five and still, you know, load up their pistol. So in those matchups, you're really wanting the the Voltic Bolt just to break over those Arcane Barriers, still get some chip damage in. And Aether Spindle just... I, I was kind of playing that for the same role, and it's just less damage uh so less good i guess another question um i had here and this is more in the blue section um mm -hmm. because i noticed that um was, uh, when i was just i do a bit of a comparison um to some of the other uh wizard players uh rohan um for example it uses uh time snap potion in his deck and uh, i yep. noticed that that isn't one that you use i thought it was an interesting card to put in uh, insofar as, you know, <clears throat> wanting to play uh, more actions with a character who generally cheats his actions into uh, into his turn, right? So, is there yeah. a reason why you wouldn't um, you wouldn't use uh, time snap potion and our? I, mean, I can understand why you're using energy potion clearly, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, time <laughs> snap uh, for uh, for your wizard is there is there a reason that you wouldn't use it? I could see definitely combos with. Yeah double tome or you know etc um so i'm just interested to hear uh, why you um why that's not a card you would consider yeah so um a part of it is uh a product of my local meta i feel uh we have quite a few brute players which uh i'm sure we'll get into the matchups uh a little bit later on but um if they and 
if you don't have if you have cars that just don't block efficiently uh you're left in a really bad position um energy potion is one of those cards that you almost never want to actually draw it uh if you do you're going to be not able to block with it you're going to be pitching it uh 90 percent of the time um you know i'd rather have another blue that just gives me other options uh time snap potion was in a very similar position as energy potion but it's harder to use uh correctly or even at all um one of the main things with time snap potion is of course you're still taking your action point to to play it initially and if you do that in a turn then you're letting your opponents just having a a full grip to just keep on pressuring you you end up on the back foot where you're having to block trying to stabilize and uh in most of the games that i played time snap potion i just found um i was just never able to then utilize it properly because i'd always be left with less cards in hand um the nice thing with energy potion is it's a lot easier just to to fire it off like oh you know i'm i'm on the back foot i'm down a card um so now i don't have as much pitch value in my hand because i pulled up this energy potion uh instead of having done something else uh for that card slot energy potion helps fill that void of that uh of that turn and really helps push you back onto being the aggressor and and pressuring your opponent's hand well you are the uh the wizard that um is able to take games from matt rogers um now he's <laughs> playing his uh, mechanologist uh and you i mean i haven't seen him lose very often but i did see him take a loss to uh to your your wizard deck uh and you know as it is wizard is probably one of the most strongest blitz characters um, I've heard yeah. uh, a fair bit of podcast complaints about Wizard in uh, Blitz, but uh, in Constructed, we do not hear many people uh, speaking of Wizard other than uh, he's really good in Blitz. Uh, I don't know about yeah. Constructed. So um, you clearly you've uh, you've decided this is the path that you want to take. Uh, perhaps carving out, uh, <clears throat> perhaps carving out some something for uh, uh, fellow Wizard players that are wanting to to bring their blitz decks into constructed so what is your approach when uh when you're building because your meta has got to be one of the strongest out there right because you got mr rogers in your in your local meta well he's the most known player but i'm sure there's other really strong players there as well um so you know yeah in that event i seen a I'd see, I'd, i didn't see too many brutes but i seen some guardians and i seen some ninjas and i seen our favorite character the hero uh warrior dorinthia so I mean, Wizard, these got to be matches that are hard, hard for Wizard to play. So, um, you know, what is your approach when, when, when thinking about your local meta and in bringing uh, your Wizard to fight? Um, you know, I know that we don't like the Brutes, but when you're fighting against <laughs> the uh, the Warriors who are almost begging you to block yep. their attacks, do you, do you just yeah. kind of let them do damage to you? Or do, are you trying to get... Because there's no... Duh, there's, I don't need... Duh, defensive reaction i've seen that you're playing um so far or at least in this build here is your fate foreseen right so yeah what what is your what is your approach to this kind of matchup because you know you, you got command and conquerors out there that are just not even allowing that card to be played so what is your what is your approach here um so uh just one minor note um i'd like to point out that matt rogers is actually in a city on the other side of the country from me uh so i wouldn't I've definitely had the chance to play against him, but I wouldn't quite call him a, a local meta. Country meta. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Been, been able to play against him uh, a few times. It's great to see uh, people traveling for events. Um, and uh, hopefully the rest of the world will be able to uh, travel like that again soon. Um, as for preparing the day, uh, so my idea for the day is every time that i'm shuffling up for an opponent uh i want 60 cards i don't want more than that so we've got uh 74 cards that i can uh pick from and i'm taking 14 out uh every single game uh so one of the main things there is what are the important things that my opponent wants so 
uh, as I mentioned, against Guardian, they want to have uh, lots of Null Rune. And there's not really much you can do about that. They've got a deck full of blues. They're just, you know, wanting to, to stop all that damage and chip away with a hammer. Um, so as the wizard player, you really need to just uh, uh, not view the game as an uphill battle to get their life points to zero, but as a, um interactive game where you're just attacking their hand. You're just... Uh, that they want to just block everything that you're doing, let them. Uh, if you hit them for four, then uh, they need to get rid of two cards at least to get rid of it. And uh, occasionally they'll have those bad hands where they do have uh, one or two reds, a couple of yellows, uh, and all of a sudden they can't afford to, to block everything and still swing the hammer. Um, so yeah, when I was uh, putting this deck together, and with the idea that I wanted to be submitting 60 cards each game, uh, I really thought about how do I trim the deck down. Um, I wasn't comfortable enough making the right call of like having three cards for each class or, or anything like that. Like These cards are specifically for this class. Uh, so that's when I decided to come up with the modal style of deck. Uh, you know, you've got the those aggressive decks like Warrior, as you mentioned. Um, Warriors typically got a lot of reds in their deck. They don't have uh, much arcane barrier, and if they do, they can't utilize it well. So uh, against Warrior, you just go, you're not going to be blocking me, which means you're going to have a full uh, hand to attack me. Uh, I need to just race here. Um, of course, as I mentioned, Fate for Scene against Warrior uh, is really important. You're just trying to keep Dawnblade with zero counters. Uh, and I find that I'm trading damage with Warrior. Um, there was actually a Warrior game on the, the stream from the event. It was the first round of the, the top four. Uh, there was some... There was a, an unfortunate call where my opponent missed their Dawnblade trigger, but just in general, the, the gameplay of that or the strategy that i employed there was just take 10 on turn one uh and then deal 10 back um and of course War uh, wizard is just you know if, if you're at 10 life then wizard can probably just kill you out, uh, out of the gate so it's almost like you're actually starting on equal life time. i can understand that um and at least in warrior you know you're able to kind of um keep her in check you know you're gonna block with your whichever card from your hand for her second attack first attack you can block it if you can great um but the second one is i guess where you're you're really starting to push is more of your defensive hands um <clears throat> now when you're uh and i think i guess with snapback it plays for one correct uh yes so snapback uh costs one so you can you can build up your to your tunic and uh, even if you you're blocked with you know pretty well your whole hand you can still play snapback uh, and just get rid of off the tunic just to poke in some, some damage, even if you have blocked with most of your hand throughout the turn. Or, uh, again, yeah, again, and the nice thing is, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, the, the nice thing is that uh, just so many of my cards um, you know, cost one. You've got Aether Flare, Skelding Rain, uh, Zap costs zero, Snapback, Reverberate, Lesson in Lava. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, all of those only cost one, and as I mentioned, I didn't like the idea of having too many two drops, uh, and that's where Tunic really shines. Is you know, as you were saying, block with three cards, don't have any pitch. That's fine. I can still just you know do a cheeky little poke. Now, um, now there is characters that either will delete your hand or force you to only block with one attack, and I can only imagine <laughs> that. Um... The Guardian and uh, Brute are both very difficult uh, characters for for Wizard to to fight with. So let's kind of touch on uh, on the Guardian first, uh, who's uh, gonna dominate and uh, could potentially dominate with uh, and dominate in you know maybe poke in a um, Command and Conquer. So uh, how are you? How how do you handle something like that? I mean, your defensive lineup is isn't really like. If he's um he's attacking with um one of his really 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 strong attacks, 
um, you may, and then it's going to cause you to discard a card, and he's dominating you. Um, you know, never mind the command and combat. Um, and like, how are you dealing? How do you how do you get into uh, trying to survive uh, these broader turns that that guardian would have? Um, so, uh, if they end up being able to dominate their their big uh, attacks, such as crippling crush, uh, the best strategy is probably to go into the fetal position and hope they take pity on you. Um, but the main thing, uh, so against something like, um, uh, a lot of their crush effects aren't actually that great against wizard because, uh, you can just, you know, they're, they're like crippling crush dominated. Uh, you can block with one card to help protect your life total. Uh, and then you can activate Kano a bunch. You, they're, they're like, make you discard a card and you're like, that's fine. I've got no hand. Um, if they've uh, dominated a crippling crush, that's what, like nine, ten energy. It, it, it's a lot, uh, which means they don't have much left for their arcane barrier. Um, so honestly, the best way to to fight against those big swings is to, uh, you know, as I was saying, attack their hand, um, force them to block, because then they're not really going to want to hold that energy to to dominate the crippling crush um because it's probably only 11 damage uh it's not a, it's not 11 damage plus a big effect it's just 11 damage well i mean you know, um, something even with uh with mangled right um because it has crush right? um so mangled uh remind me what that one does uh, so Mangled is, uh, you know, I think it's his crush. Uh, if Mangled deals four or more damage to a hero, or destroy a target hero's equipment with a minus one counter on it. Well, I oh, guess sure. in this case, you don't really have a lot, right? Um, you got your boots yeah. that you don't block with. You got your glove that you don't block with. The iron rot would destroy itself anyways. Uh, and yeah. you got... the, the only thing that can affect is the, the Arcanite skull cap, which if it's already got a counter on it, then uh, block with the skull cap and then, you know, they're not going to be doing arcane da damage. Uh, righteous cleansing is actually something that we, you know, if if I if I'm fighting a guardian and I see righteous cleansing, um, and it has dominate, I mean that's rough. <laughs> that's yeah. that's rough. So so righteous cleansing is probably the one uh, attack from guardian that I can think of that that actually scares me. Um, it's only been used against me a couple of times but it just has the potential to completely throw off your game plan. Um, if that gets dominated, then fetal position strategy. Now, um, if they are, I mean, from what I've noticed from your games, um, you really do want to have a setup where you can have your um, your Tome of Findel in your... Um, in your arsenal in your and throw yeah. that baby up to draw all the beautiful cards you can um even if you get uh if you could top deck somehow a uh the other tome um and get yeah. and draw up your two cards and then tome of find i mean we're living in a beautiful world <laughs> but yeah. um you know i gotta i gotta say the guardian getting his uh throwing in dominate and then command and conquer has gotta gotta be a little rough right so uh um, yeah I mean, if there was, um, you know, if you're starting to see, like, you get, if your opponent gets one or two turns like that, it, it in my experience at least, it's, it becomes really rough, right? Um, mm. And uh, I guess that's where people uh, who are concerned with trying to play Wizard in, uh, in Constructed um, will be concerned. However, you've, you've had matches against these characters. Clearly, uh, people who have, uh, who've had the game for as long as anyone else has. And uh, so they must have thought of these strategies and putting these kind of turns together. Uh, and, uh, you know, they managed, they managed to, to, you managed to come over top over all of them, right? So what is, um, what is your game plan at least going into fighting Guardian and just kind of, you know, like you said, you're gonna attack their hand. You're gonna kind of throw stuff at them. So they're gonna have to try to block it. Is that, is that yeah. kind of, so you'll just only really attack on your own turn and just block whatever you can? Um, yeah, so, um, a lot of people like, um, the Guardian, oh, sorry, they, they think that with the Guardian, you wait for them to spend all their resource on a big attack, and then you, 
uh, Kano at the end of the turn to uh, like afterwards to to really punish them. Um, I've tried that a few times, and it ends up with with Kano just kind of being a bit dead. He's just that little bit too squishy. Um, I just in general, I don't really like um, the tome of Fiendal, you know, putting into your arsenal, do nothing during your turn uh, to hopefully gain six life. Um, you know, with the tunic you you draw two, because uh, you end up just taking more than six damage almost every time uh, whenever you try to be cheeky uh, like that. I like Tome of Fiendal because it is more Tome of Aether Waves. Uh, when you activate Kano, you can hit Tome of Fiendal and then you can just draw some more cards which can really fuel that engine. Um, I think in playing this deck, uh, I've had Tome of Fiendal is probably one of the newest cards that I've had. Uh, I just don't have the, the full collection. Um, but I, I very rarely play it from the arsenal. I, I'm always, always playing it from the top of my deck and just fueling those, those bigger turns. Um, at the end of the day, life is a resource. Uh, the only life point that matters is the last one. Uh, there are, of course, some exceptions there. If you're on one life against Ninja, you're uh, having a really bad day. Uh, but life is a resource, and, and effects that gain life... Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of them. Uh, you'll notice that I don't like, um, I, I don't play Sigil of Solace. I think only a few heroes uh, should consider it. And uh, if you know me from outside of this interview, you know that I uh, am almost on a crusade against that card. I, I just don't like cards that gain life when they don't do anything else. I've definitely had very long games against Guardians. <laughs> <laughs> I think with our, with our yeah. local one of our local guardians, we have went to time every game. But I, I also I like to to really think my way through the through my turns. Uh, now, yeah. um, with that said, let's um, let's talk about Brute. Um, this is a character I personally thought I would play and uh, think less, but ended up thinking more. So I'm interested oh. to hear. Uh, <laughs> I'm interested to hear. Well, you know, setting up those uh, intimidate turns can be can be rough. Just trying to navigate, like how to intimidate their hand away. Um, I would really be yeah. interested in hearing how, how I, 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 how we fight the. How does us as the wizards fight against uh, fight against the brute, the brute, the the, the angry orc. Uh, the the brute is. I I really dislike the. I think he's an orc. It's gotta be. I really dislike the brute matchup. Um, one of our one of my local players. Um, I I don't think I've won a single game against him. Um, on on him playing brute. Um, the the matchup's hard. The the brute gets two arcane barrier on their skull horn, so they can uh they can have three or four null rune. Uh, they can often pay for it pretty aggressively. They can swing at you with a club. And then their big turns are are scarier than Guardian's. Um, you know, Guardian's big turn is like uh, 11 damage with a crush effect. Uh, Brute's big turn is like 20 damage with only one card that you can block with, or even none. The most I can get um, with this guy is 25 damage, but it ha all the stars have to align. Yeah, um, so... The, um, I've played against Brute a bit, and there's uh, a couple of Brute players in my meta, so there's one that I've uh, figured stuff out. Uh, and basically, for the Brute matchup, you have to uh, first hope that they're not playing combo Brute uh, with the claws, because that's, that I just cannot beat. Uh, but second, you want to go with that go-wide strategy of uh, playing as many spells in a turn as you can, and... Uh, just really pressure their their hand. Um, Brute's power is significantly reduced if they uh, can't pitch to pay for something and discard a random card from their hand. Um, so they kind of need access to three cards. Uh, two of them from hand, one from arsenal is fine for them, but um, if you're really stripping their hand away and playing aggressive then it's kind of like their guardian uh, as well. It's you, you pressure their hand, so then they can't uh, hit you for a lot. Um, but yeah, Brute is just... 
it, it's a really hard matchup, and I I'm lucky that at the tournament um, I didn't actually come up against Brute a single time. Uh, I, I think luck was very much a, a big factor in that. So I guess um, I mean this isn't all the classes, but I think with uh, with Ninja, I guess you know it's the same it's the same strategy as when you're fighting with Guardian, as when you're fighting with Warriors. You're gonna attack their hand because they want to race your your life away, uh, much like the uh, uh, Guardian does, right? They, they except for Ninja's attacks are punches and bunches, right? There's like a bunch of attacks mm. played throughout a turn. Yeah. Whereas. Um, Whereas the uh, Guardian is a really, really, really strong attack that, you know... One big hit. Yeah, but then you can, you, like you were saying before, you got your zeros that you can kind of just drop down and play. So, um, yeah. with that said, uh, I want to throw a character, a, a class at you that you probably don't get to play that often, potentially, and that is Ranger. <laughs> um, actually, my partner plays Ranger, so it's probably the matchup I've practiced the most. Well... <laughs> How lucky <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I just want to go back to the, the ninja very quickly. Sure. Um, so uh, as you said, ninja is wanting to race you. They often don't have enough Nelrun to block you profitably. So they're just going to, to take the damage and try to deal more back. Um, so I actually run a different strategy completely then to Guardian, where Guardian, I'm trying to attack their hand. Uh, Ninja, I'm just trying to do as much damage as possible. Um, so, you know, the Guardian matchup, you're expecting a lot of Nelrun. You play the, the Vaulted Bolts, the Stir, the Fork Lightning, so on and so forth. Uh, Ninja, I, I play the, the cards that you can go, go wide. Uh, then you have more damage potential on your turns. And basically, you've got uh, four turns of blocking the second Kodachi to try and keep their mask offline and uh, just hope they don't natural combo you too much. Um, but for the, the Ranger matchup, so uh, Ranger is uh, quite interesting. They have very strong um, hit effects on almost all of their arrows. Uh, that's kind of what like Ranger's thing. Uh, but another thing in the Ranger decks is they are very full of red. They don't have very much uh, effects that can block uh, arcane damage. They might be running Irena's Prayer. Uh, I'm lucky that my partner uh, has not been. But um, uh, yeah, you just end up going, uh, going big, going wide. Uh, you want to run the, um, the Fate for Scene. Uh, just to stop some of the big on-hit effect. So uh, the Ranger deck is all about just knowing what to block, and you save your equipment for uh, high-impact attack. Uh, so Ranger, with their Skullbone cross wrap, with uh, Knock the Death Whistle, they can pretty consistently give red in the ledger, um, which is the biggest on-hit effect to, to care about. Uh, they can consistently give that Dominate, um, if it's just for five, you can block for three from your hand and some equipment, or fate for scene and one piece of equipment. Um, if they boost it with uh, things like increase the tension, nimbleism, um, and any number of other cards that they uh, use, take aim is another one. Um, then they're coming in for uh, eight or uh, even eleven damage with their red in the ledger. Uh, in that case, you just kind of um, block as much damage as you can. So block with one card. Uh, probably save your equipment just for next time that it will actually make a difference. Um, and then you can't do things during your turn, but you can still do things during their turn. Remember, every, every turn is our turn. I always get the feeling of Loki out of this wizard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could just imagine all the things he would say. Um, so now we got um, merchant as a class, but I don't. Is he is he really a class? Like, what what does he do? Pay wizard not to kill him? <laughs> um, um, have you had experience yeah. fighting this character? Um, I think I've played against merchant uh, once or twice. Um, I we haven't actually played too much split. 
in our local meta. Um, we've done, I think I've played in maybe six events since the format was announced. Um, maybe a little bit more, but not much. Um, and most people don't really want to play a class that you can only play generics in. Um, but I hear that there's a very good uh, fatigue merchant deck uh, ro rolling around. Uh, just unfortunately, I don't really know enough about that uh, matchup. And all blood sticks, I basically uh, just try to kill them by turn two. Um, I got to think that merchant uh, being a generic class only. Um, aside from, I don't know, playing... Well, there, I mean, there's good generic cards. I mean, he's got Enlightened Strike, and he's got Command and Conquer, and he's got the cool cards. But um, Wizard is Wizard, and in, uh, in Blitz, that is, uh, that, is his, that is his place. Yeah, so I think um, Kavdin, the Merchant, uh, I think his strength is in that he, he really plays with the life totals. Um, you know, he, he gains life uh, if you're the lowest life total. Uh, he deals damage if you're the highest life total, um, which is where that, that fatigue uh, strategy can really come in. Um, again, I don't really know too much about uh, what's played in that. I don't know what like how many blues to expect or how much arcane barrier to expect. Um, I just hope that by the end of a couple of turns, uh, they're, they're just kind of lying on the on the side of the road <laughs> they're just uh, not there anymore <laughs> yeah so um, yeah exactly what um, would you like to see uh coming in uh monarch for wizard because i mean i i can't imagine he's going to get a lot of toys i can see that ranger will probably get uh some new toys uh brute brute maybe um maybe <laughs> more, maybe maybe another version of beast within maybe another massacre <laughs> but I think just, just more barraging beatdowns just like maybe more maybe uh, a better version of blood rush bellow that just lets you uh, do as you please maybe a better sand sketch plans do, do we need anything really <laughs> but yeah. um, what, um with that in mind though um what are some things you think wizard is really lacking like do, do we do we need a different wizard I don't think so um but do we need to see cards in wizard that we're not currently seeing here um so i i think a, another wizard could be really interesting one that plays more with uh uh with the hand rather than the top of the deck which is kano's that's very much kano's deck right um but i, I as for cards uh i i'd kind of like to see some that uh maybe plays with arcane barrier a little bit um maybe not piercing damage i think that'll be a little bit strong wizard already attacks players in, in different ways that uh other classes don't so people already feel like that the way that kano attacks is a little unfair uh and i can't really disagree too much but i think that um uh Something that interacts with Arcane Barrier in some way would be uh, interesting. What if you had a way of um, getting rid of their hand? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Yeah, just, I mean, something that uh, they have to pitch as much as possible to block uh, would probably be far too strong. You know, uh, if the game developers have to be listening to, listen to this, don't take that as an idea. But, um,. Yeah, something that uh, that interacts that way. You've already got cards that allow you to uh, to do multiple things per turn. Uh, you know, Cindering Foresight can be played uh, as an instant when it's not your turn, which lets you then uh, play Snapback. Snapback. Yeah. Uh, Reverberate lets you uh, uh, play your, uh, something as an instant equal to the dam uh, with cost equal to or less than the damage dealt. Uh, Stir the Aetherwind and Chain Lightning both let you play something as if for an instant uh, from your hand. Chain Lightning, as I've said, is, is awkward at best, but uh, uh, can really get like set up those big damage turns. Um, so I think that having, you know, I think that Kano is kind of set up for for doing that. He's got uh, cards that boost. 
uh, other cards. So he's kind of got those two avenues covered, and I'd like to see Kano uh, with really different uh, ways to um, to interact with the hands, because I think that's where where Kano actually uh, shines. So his hand. Um, and. Uh, you want, uh, to, you want him to interact with his I own mean, like, hand or interact with his own hand? Uh, I mean, like, he's already got quite a lot to, to draw cards, but um, maybe something like, uh, I don't know if you've played Magic much, but the iconic card Brainstorm uh, lets you draw three, then put two cards back on top of your deck. Something like that would be quite interesting, uh, where you can really shape, uh, can't, like, Put a card from your hand on top of your deck for Kano then to play it as an instant. Um, there's definitely some times that that'll be quite handy. Uh, but at the moment, he's already got cards that can interact with his own hand. He's got a lot of opt, he's got a lot of draw. Uh, his opponent's hand, he's just got the arcane barrier um, as a way to attack them. What if he had a way to interact with their attack? You know, he can put down a card that, that doesn't allow that attack to gain any damage bonuses. You know, that that would that could be interesting. Yeah, that uh, something like those uh, was it tripwire trap or is a pitfall trap? Uh, one of the ranger traps uh, uh, interacts with uh, attacks in that way, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I think it'd be really cool for, for Kano to be able to have that kind of thing, or, um, you know, an elemental shield kind of card that, uh, as a defense reaction, and then, uh, they take damage equal to, uh, to something. Could be quite a, a fun way to, to play a, a very defensive wizard, um, which I think people have been trying to make Kano work, and, uh, uh, want to try set up the big uh, one turn kills and otherwise don't do anything uh, kind of wizard and uh, I just think that Kano is not good as a defensive character um, which could be another way to, to really shape how you can play him Alright, that's that. That is uh, gives me a lot to think about. Even my own uh, wizardly trails. Um, I will be uh, definitely taking a lot of notes and watching and rewatching this interview uh, to kind of more <laughs> pick your, your thoughts or uh, maybe there's some things that uh, you've uh, thrown out there that are just over my poor head. I'm, uh, I'm new yep. at the School of Magic. But uh, <laughs> I wanted yeah, well, to... I mean, mm -hmm. as, as I mentioned, uh, I think Kano is a great um, offensive character and I think that's probably the, the, the first lesson of playing Wizard is um, only block what you need to. Knowing what to block is... Uh, like, knowing what you need to block is obviously a, a skill in itself, but, uh, you know, don't be afraid to take some damage and dish it 